Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Today we have a very special guest, not only for the studio and our other hosts, but for me personally and professionally. Our show today is called Ma'ili Ili Musings, Sustainable Agriculture in Waianae. And we're gonna to talk to our guest, Frankie Kothi, a little bit more about Ma'ili Ili, what it is, and her extremely amazing watershed management project in Ma'ili Ili on the west side of Oahu. So usually our show, we're talking to farmers or chefs or restaurateurs, and I always wanna talk about the people who make Make all that farming happen besides the farmers, the people who help the farmers behind the curtain. So today we have Frankie Kothi, Project Coordinator of Oahu Resource Conservation Development Council. Super long name, right? Also known as Oahu RCD, an organization very close to me because I work for them as well. So Frankie is my colleague and co-worker and she and I have been working together for about two years now, working with farmers in the field, providing technical assistance, community outreach and conservation planning. But today, She's the star of the show, not me. We're not talking about me. So right now I'd like to take a quick second and introduce and do a warm introduction for Frankie Kothi. Oh, thanks, Steph. Hi, Frankie. Hey. I'm gonna pretend like I don't know you at all. Sounds okay. good. So Frankie, so you work with this organization called Oahu rc and I thought maybe you could give us a quick elevator pitch of what that is. Yes, okay, so Oahu rc and which we do go by the acronym a lot more, is a sustainable agriculture nonprofit, mm -hmm. and our work mainly focuses on the farmer and those partners of the farmers. And we reach out to them and help to promote uh, stewardship of the islands through community outreach, like workshops and events, uh, conservation planning and technical assistance. Uh, people who are having trouble on the lands and need some help, we're here for them and can provide them resources. Uh, and yeah, and of course, watershed management and watershed restoration, which is the grant that I work under. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's been a really great project and learning experience to be under. So. Right. And so it seems you're talking about watershed management. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when people, you know, I don't think people are sitting around all day thinking about watersheds like we right. are. Yeah, right, right. So I thought you could just take, um, just give us a brief overview of maybe what a watershed is and why is it so important specifically to farming? Definitely. So watersheds basically run Malco to Makai, mountain to ocean. Anything that is up higher is gonna trickle down into the ocean. So uh, for my project in this episode, we're talking about Ma'ili Ili, which is what I work under. Uh, I work in the watershed of, uh, I'm sorry, the Ahupua'a of Lualuale, mm. and a smaller watershed piece of that is Ma'ili'ili. Ili. Okay. And so it's a small little piece of the pie of the Lualuale Ahupua'a, or land okay. division. All right, yeah. yes, uh, you know, obviously people here know Ahupua'a, mm -hmm. but watershed's maybe a, a more mainland right, idea. Right, right. So um, I thought maybe we could pull up a map of Ma'ili'ili. Ili. I think we have an image of this. Um, so yeah, there it is. Can you tell us a little bit what we're looking at? So I for understand sure. we have a bunch of lines here. Oh yeah. But for everyone who doesn't understand maps, yeah. maybe you could give a quick overview of what this is. Absolutely. So um, besides a bunch of lines, I'll break it down a little bit uh, more simplistic. So um, if you were driving out to the west side of Oahu, that this is kind of what you're looking at. Um, at the bottom, you'd see Nanakuli, uh, like the corner of that yellow oh, index, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. and you'd keep driving along and Miley is in the middle of that okay. and um, you start to hit this red dotted line. That red dotted line is the project boundaries. Okay. So this project was delineated through this this um, land boundary, which is a smaller piece of the Lululei watershed, which is the yellow boundary. Mm -hmm. So Ahupua'a yellow, red dotted uh, project boundary. And then within that, uh, is an even smaller division, which is the project area, fo the focus area, excuse okay. me. And that's about 2,000 acres, and that's really where um, the farm hub is of Lululei. Mm -hmm. um, the area Ma'ili Ili uh, is known, or it means small pebbles, and because the land there 
has is, is so pebbly. The farmers work in a very interesting environment, working around those different obstacles. But the soil is extremely fertile, um, so it's a huge hub of farmers in that small focus area where I'm working. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, you know we keep talking about this project that you're working on, Ma'ili Ili, and you know who is this through? Is it is this a state entity? Like where? What is this project, and how did it come about? Definitely. So. Uh, these funds originally are Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. EPA funds. Okay, federal funds. Then. Mm -hmm, federal funds that get trickled down into the state level, mm -hmm. which is through the Department of Health, Clean Water Branch. Okay. Clean Water Branch puts out grant funding, and um, Oahu RCND applies for these grants. And uh, one year, Ma'ili'ili happened to be one of the focus areas. And we said, hey, let's do it. And we uh, took a stab at it and applied for grant funding and were awarded funds to help these farmers in Waianae, specifically for erosion control and uh, preserving the watershed and okay. keeping the waters clean. So the Department of Health Clean Water Branch, mm -hmm. ultimately, clean. they want clean water, Correct. right? They yeah. want to improve water quality. Mm -hmm. And you can do that through reducing erosion, right? Yes. Preventing soil from getting in mm -hmm. our waterways. So you're working with farmers and ranchers and, and landowners there to mm -hmm. do what exactly? So, you know, the goal, reduce erosion, improve water quality. Right. How are you helping farmers do that? Definitely. So it's really funny because a lot of people you talk to who aren't in agriculture yes. and you say, oh, I, I do sustainable agriculture. Yeah. They kind of look at you like, Huh? Huh? Because it's, it sounds oil and water, like mm. agriculture, soil, right. tilling, things like that does not usually mix with the idea of sustainability mm. and generations to come, and sometimes it has a stigma. Uh, what this project does is marry the two of sustainability and agriculture by helping to implement best management practices, or BMPs, uh, which is basically green infrastructure on the property. So adding that greenery to help reduce soil from just washing off their property. Because mm -hmm. everything that's on land can go down into the ocean, anything. Right. And there's so many streams there. And Waianae has such a unique uh, environment that it's so dry. And then as soon as floods and waters come in, which it does, it's not like it's used to the, the water coming mm -hmm. through. So it washes everything out. It has a really bigger quickly. impact. Yeah. I, sometimes I get calls and they're like, this stream just washed out half. Like, it's double. Oh, my gosh. And, and I, you know, it's right. just, that's just how it is. So the farmers there are extremely aware of it, which makes my job really easy because I have farmers who want to add in that green infrastructure and put in green belts and put in grass waterways, things that are going to trap the soil. Mm -hmm. So I come in and uh, help these farmers with projects that they ultimately want to do, okay. but don't always have funds mm -hmm. to do. Because as we know, agriculture in Hawaii is extremely financially stressful. And it's a lot of times they're doing double jobs or they're trying to make this work as a full-time job. It's really difficult. And so having these funds helps the farmer to make that possible. So total, we gave out $65,000 to farmers within that focus area to work on projects that they felt could improve their properties and make it last for generations to come. So wow. yeah, it's been really great to see these projects come to life. Yeah, so you know, something um, people probably not in natural resource management understand, you know, erosion is a natural process, right? Yep. We could do the best practices in the world and you're still gonna have some erosion, yep. especially here in Hawaii with, you know, the geology of Hawaii. Um, and I, why specifically are you working with farmers? Farmers are just the most resilient people I know. Resiliency is, is a hot word right now, yeah? Mm, oh, we want... Sexy word. Right, it totally is. <laughs> and whenever somebody asks me about my work and they're like, oh, how is it? Like, how are these farmers? Like, the, the first word, mm. there are two words that come to my mind. Okay. One is resilient. The farmers are so resilient. Mm. They want to make this work. They are struggling. Uh, but they are thriving in what they do. Mm -hmm. um, every every time they think it's two steps backwards, they make five steps forward. Wow, it's unreal. Like the the work that they do is just so rewarding to them, and it uh, it's it's you catch it. Like right. you want them to do well, and so we pick this watershed 
knowing that there are going to be farmers in here that are going to want to do some good for the environment. Mm -hmm. And they're the yeah. original land stewards. They if are. You will. Yeah, they are. And I'm just there to help help them along the way. Mm. And I'm not forcing them to do anything. These are projects they wanted to do. Right. So, I mean, they've just been inspiring. Yeah. The second word that comes to my mind whenever I think of these farmers, and especially agriculture in Waianae and Ma'ili'ili, is mamona, which okay. is fertile and rich. And usually it's used to describe food, right? Okay. Which is so perfect. Uh, but <laughs> good pun. They, they are mamona. Like, they, they just have so much that they can give to the land and that they put in, mm -hmm. and what they get out of it is just even more beautiful. Like, their, their crops, their, their work, everything culminates into these great, uh, great farms and great productions. And you can see it in the owners, you can see it in their farm workers, everyone comes back, they come and volunteer. So yeah. I, I think Oahu RCD, we work with farmers specifically, but these watershed projects focus on farmers because we know that they want to do good in Hawaii, so. Yeah, yeah. and they, they also manage larger pieces of land, yep. too, right? Yeah. So, like, by reaching one individual, you might be able to reach 10 times the amount than mm -hmm. if you just reach one homeowner or small landowner oh, yeah. that way, too. Yeah, definitely. I, I was just out the other day, yeah. and I, I met with this farmer, and uh, he had one acre. Okay. We, we spoke for maybe two or three hours just talking about oh, what's wow. going on, what's <laughs> happening. He just wanted Talk to hear story. everything. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just talking story and learning from him what he thinks of the area and how, why he's here and why he loves this as his home. And uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't going to work out. And he was like, well, you know, I got auntie next door who's got five acres. She could use some help. Oh, wow. You know, so it's a community out there. They want to help each other, and everyone is connected in that watershed. Mm -hmm. So. You really see, uh, to me, the local culture of Hawaii come out in some of these more rural areas, especially Y and I. So, I mean, it's just great being out there. It's very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like you you definitely have enthusiasm and passion for this project. And I was wondering, have you always had a passion for agriculture, or is it something, you know, born out, you know, just loving nature? Where did this come from? Agriculture was not my background. Okay. As Steph knows, uh, but <laughs> I don't know you. No, you don't know me at all. No, not at all. Um, agriculture was not my background. Um, my mom gardens, but that's probably the extent of it. Um, I grew up suburbs Mililani. Okay. Um, when agriculture, it, to me in my time growing up here, was not a big thing. You don't see the gardens and aquaponics that you see now. Right. Um, I walk through the middle school now, and there's this huge aquaponics thing going oh, wow. on. I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> like, this was not here before, you know? Um, but so it wasn't in my background, but I was always out in nature. Um, my mom always took me hiking, mm -hmm. and then me and my sister got involved in paddling. Uh, so, I mean, to me, nature is extremely important, and I, I always had this desire to want to learn more about it, which is why you know, people get island fever here, but I've Never got an island fever because every time I go outside, I learn something new, even if it's on the same hike, you mm -hmm. know? And so I always wanted to help. I've always been somebody who wants to help out wherever necessary. And uh, when I finished my undergrad here uh, in zoology, I really, I knew I liked helping people and I knew I liked helping the environment, but uh, I went for my master's in natural resource management, and that's what led me into managing resources and ultimately led me to Wahoo RCD. So it's been great learning about agriculture, and I feel very in tune with the communities of agriculture as of now. So, yeah. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk to Frankie more about her specific project in Ili Ili and how she's supporting sustainable agriculture in the Waianae area. She took her passion for natural resources and nature and her ability to work with local community and just provide technical assistance. And we're going to see kind of before and after shots of this project and how you, the audience, can help support her as she continues to work in the Ili Ili. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us, where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back. We've been talking to Frankie Kothi, Project Coordinator for Oahu RCND. The name of our show is Ma'ili Ili Musings, right? So we're talking about Ma'ili Ili, what it is and what she does specifically in this watershed to help farmers, ranchers, and landowners provide sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. So we talked a little bit about her love of nature, her background in natural resource management, and all the technical assistance that she's providing in the field, specifically in the watershed of Ma'ili Ili. Frankie has been with Oahu RCND for about two years now, and she has hit the ground running, coordinating with local community and farmers to really impact the, the land here in Hawaii. So right now, um, we're going to be talking about the specific projects she's been doing in Ma'ili Ili and the farms that she's been working with. So her project is basically helping farmers implement practices that reduce erosion and improve water quality through a grant through Department of Health Clean Water Branch here in Hawaii. So they are focused, their goal is to improve water quality, specifically in the Ma'ili Ili watershed. And Frankie's been working with farms out there because they have a larger impact on improving our water quality and also providing local food. So we are now going to jump back to Frankie. And we're going to talk a little bit about, so you, you kept talking about you're helping these farmers, you're helping these farmers. Are you, you know, you're providing technical assistance. Are you also providing money or, you know, what, what does that look like? Yeah, so the money that we provide the farmers, so yes, we provide them with funds. Yay, fun, yes. funding for farms. Funding for farmers in Waianae yes. specifically. You know, it's so important that they see some of that too. It's mm -hmm. a huge hub out there. Um, the money gets divvied out to some farmers who have qualified based on an application that they put through to us. Okay. Uh, we saw that they were a good candidate, mm -hmm. and we awarded them funds, total of $65,000 nice. among a number of farms. Mm -hmm. And they, we provide 76% funds, okay. and they have to come up with the rest. Okay. And that can be through monetary or matching, mm -hmm. like, labor and donated Donations materials, and volunteer days, okay. any, any kind of those things. So they can make it up pretty well. And, um, and it brings in this really good collaboration of, okay, we have these funds, and I'm going to bring in some money here, and let's have this huge volunteer day of everyone moving rocks. Okay. And it's just, it's huge. It's, right. it's wonderful to see. It's a very powerful project. And the goal is to identify those resource concerns that they have themselves and provide the funding for them to achieve those practices. Right. So example, um, one of these farms is on a stream bank. A stream bank runs through their property. Okay. If when it floods, the stream pulls out and pulls out some of the land. Okay. So they cleared Keawe. Mm -hmm. They used the funds to clear it and to stabilize the bank by adding in native plants like oh. pohinahina and a'ali'i, where it does well in dry environments, and okay. it's going to flourish really right. well. And they're doing a small piece of it, and once that's set, then they're going to continue on after the project ends, because they can propagate and use the Ooh, same materials. Okay. And uh, at the same time, they're using other erosion tools like vetiver, which is a really strong grass that's not, it doesn't spread. It's not like California grass. Okay. It stays in one place and it acts like this amazing barrier that when soil comes through, it blocks it. And oh. it just stays right there and then they can take that soil and put it back on their land. Yeah. And they're, they're using it for that too. And every measure they can take to keep that soil on their property, they're trying to do it. Yeah. So that's just one project going on. And again, 76% of, of the funds come from us, and then they make up the rest. So right. it's an investment on everybody's part. Yeah, you know, creating this, this team effort mm -hmm. to manage the land n not only helps with, like, the responsibility of, like, someone being like, you got to do this, we have a timeline, um, but also, you know, like you said, decreasing the cost so it makes it easier for the farmer to implement and also, you know, it's not stealing money away from their business, but ultimately provides for the community, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're now not getting all this fertile topsoil that you were talking about washing into the stream, going down into the ocean, and ultimately the coral reefs. So, um, you know, I thought maybe we could talk 
you know, we keep talking about these farmers, these farmers. Maybe we can talk about the specific farms that you've worked with. Yes. So I think we have a logo here um, of the farms you've been working with. Yeah. So tell us who these farms are and what they do. So these are just a few of the farmers that we work with. And, you know, I call them farmers, but they're more like my partners in this. Um, they're just so great to work with. And as they learn things from me, I learn from them even more. Um, so one is Kahumana, uh, an organic farm out there, and they do a bunch of diversified crops. Um, the second right next to that is Ma'o, and they do a lot of diverse organics as well. Um, two great organizations and farms and also really good friends. Like, they, the farms are friends. It's unreal, you know? <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, you went over there and saw them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know them. You know? And there's no... There's no it's there's not a competition because there's such a need for local food. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it helps each other when they work together. That's what's unreal. Right. Um, down below, that wonderful little bee is... Uh, it's adorable. Adorable, as is their family. Uh, the Tolentinos, Tolentino uh, Farms. Mm -hmm. um, they're known for their honey. So if you went to like Four Seasons, okay. or some, I think even Ooh, at Salt. fancy. Yeah, they <laughs> have some great value-added honey. And besides that, they were known as like the eggplant kings in the 70s. Okay. So they have a long history of farming it in wine. Um, it's funny to go from eggplant kings to now honey kings. Second generation, that's why. Ah. So they've got, they've got the generations rolling in. And uh, fun backstory okay. about their, their introduction to honey was they were out of pollinators. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they started planting uh, flowers and fruiting trees so that they could bring the pollinators back. Oh. And that's how they got into honey. And the kids kept going with it. And Yeah, uh, this so, natural transition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So wow. they do both at the same time now, the commercial agriculture and the honey. All right. Yeah, and then uh, the last one on there was Naked Cow Dairy. Uh, and they are, they are the only dairy on Oahu mm -hmm. is what I know yeah. of. And they do specialty cheeses, which are amazing, and butters, which are also amazing. Yeah. Um, you can find them in Safeway. I know that. Safeway. And I believe they do events out at Salt Kakaaka, too. Oh, so, okay. You know, they're, they're out and about, and they are busy, and yeah. they work so hard. That's one thing they all have in common. They work so hard, mm -hmm. all of these guys. So they, all four of these amazing farmers have projects uh, and funding to do some of this conservation work. Okay. Yeah. So let's take, um, let's take maybe Kahumana photo. Yeah. Um, we'll show a before and after, and you can kind of tell us what we're going to be looking at at this um, Kahumana photo. So For left sure. is? Left is October 2017. Okay. So they had broken ground on this hillside, and it was fallow lands, and they wanted to do an orchard. And they weren't sure how they were going to do it. They wanted to plant a bunch of trees, and they didn't have the funds to be able to do contour. They were like, we're just going to plant the trees and call it. Okay. Uh, the project allowed them to properly do contour planting, mm -hmm. which means that they, the water, when it comes down the slope, it won't just wash off. It'll catch on those trees, and it's okay. way more sustainable than planting in rows down a slope. Mm -hmm. So on the right side, January 2018, they have graveled that top road, which will help for uh, road access mm -hmm. uh, instead of bringing on vehicles on this dirt road. And Driving just, everywhere. Oh, gosh, yeah. They've got this amazing gravel road, which is still intact, and we're in June. It's, it's right. really stable. They yeah. did an amazing job. And then you can see some of the trees uh, that they're planting just coming up and stabilizing. Little babies, yeah. Little babies and they've mulched everything, yeah. which I was just amazed by. I was ready to see, like, okay, it's going to be dirt and contour. Here right. we go. They're like, oh, no, we mulched it all. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I was like, awesome. So yeah. they are really making some huge strides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, and that mulch is going to conserve moisture, right? right. So they're going to reduce on irrigation costs, especially out on the west side, yeah. right? Um, where it is definitely drier for mm -hmm. sure and not as much rainfall. So yeah. maybe um, would you like to look at another Let's farm? Do another one. All yeah. right. Uh, we'll let our producer pick which. Yeah. All right. Okay. What this, are we looking at? This is Naked Cow Dairy, okay. and this is a really fun project. So Naked Cow Dairy is on a property that had a lot of concrete underneath it. Okay. So they worked with it, and they had paddocks, and their cows could roam around, but they couldn't grow grass for uh, doing rotations. For feed. Yeah, they couldn't do feed because okay. they've got concrete all over the ground. Right. And who has money to pull up concrete? Oh gosh. And I mean thick industrial concrete. Acres and acres of yes. concrete. Yes. And it was unbelievable. Yeah. And so they pushed and pushed and they pulled out all this concrete 
and you can see the piles in September 2017 on the left. That's mid-process. Okay. And then on January 2018, it looks greener. It's because of the rain season. Okay. Okay. What you're, what's missing is the, are those concrete piles. They're mm. all gone. And if you see it in like the very far back, it looks like pebbles in the back. Right. That's from a volunteer day of 40 people stacking up those. 40 people. Yeah. My wow. Ely Ely like pebbles, pebbles that I'm talking about. I mean, they're big pebbles, man. Yeah. It's, it's rough. They're so rocks. <laughs> they're, they are rocks. Yeah. yeah. So um, they've collected them all and they were getting them out of there on that site visit. So now they can put in pasture. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a huge game changer for them in terms of uh, conservation improvement. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like, it sounds like you, I don't want to call you a tool, but you're basically a tool for farmers. Yeah, yeah. Um, they already have these great ideas, and they want to do it. But like you said, they're they're farming or they're ranching, and then they're also trying to build their business, marketing. Um, they're out at salt. They're out here. They're out in four seasons. They're doing value-added production, but they don't necessarily always have the time or money to do it. And yeah. so you help... Um, you help them with that by providing funding, but also that technical assistance in the field. Yeah. So, you know, we have some pictures of you just out in the field talking to farmers. Tolentino's here. Yeah. You've got the little ones out, that farming family you're talking about. Um, yeah, and obviously holding workshops out in Waianae, cover crop cocktails. Oh, yeah. Uh, just field days, just so, you know, not only so we can help farmers, but farmers can help other farmers as well. Definitely, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you for coming on our show today. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to talk to you in this way. Thanks for um, having me. I see you. I saw you this morning. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so thank you again. Uh, you're a huge friend to the show hosts here, Pomai, Matt, and myself. Yes. So thank you for coming on and updating us about the Ma'ili Ili project and what you've been doing. Anytime. So. Definitely. We were joined by Frankie Kothi, project coordinator of Oahu RCD. You can learn more about her and her job at www.oahurcd.org or just come out to a neighborhood board meeting out in Waianae or one of our workshops to talk to her directly. She loves connecting with farmers, landowners, ranchers, or basically anyone in the community. She's very personable. So I want to thank her and thank ThinkTech for having Hawaii Food and Farmers Series on. We'll see you next time. <laughs>